D3R is a talented young artist who has been making a name for himself with his electronic style music that draws influences from the genres of dubstep, digicore, and hyperpop. Hopefully this video helps you learn a little more about him. D3R grew up in British Columbia, Canada and took an interest in technology early on. He said he stayed inside on the internet and played video games while most kids around him were involved with outdoor activities. Although most of his youth revolved around his interest in technology, he did pick up skateboarding as a hobby in his preteens. Music entered his life early as well. His father was a musician and pushed D3R into choir by the age of 3 and piano lessons by the age of 6. D3R hated it at the time, but looking back he's grateful for it. He said these experiences didn't exactly transfer into his music today directly, but feels somewhere in his subconscious they might have added value to where his art is currently. It's also worth mentioning as a kid that D3R's father used to take him to see the band Rush in concert, being that Rush was his father's favorite band. D3R put an end to his involvement in choir and piano by the time he was 11. It was also at the age of 11 D3R got his first iPod and started to develop his own music taste for the first time without his parents' influence. D3R soon found a love for the genre dubstep with Skrillex being his favorite artist. D3R said he would stay up all night watching Skrillex perform live trying to understand the sound and how it was put together. This led to music re-entering his life at the age of 12 when his father gifted him a cheap DJ controller. D3R messed around with the instrument but eventually the hobby slipped away from him. Once D3R got to high school, his music taste shifted and he started listening to the emo rap genre. A few of his favorite artists in this style include Lil Peep, XXXTentacion, Suicide Boys, and Juice World. By the time 2020 rolled around and the pandemic hit, D3R's music taste shifted again. Around this time, he discovered the hyperpop and digicore scene that was rising in popularity at the time. He said he enjoyed the genre for the overstimulation of serotonin and dopamine the music seemed to convey. He mentioned enjoying music from the collective Nova Gang. While listening to this new music, D3R had the thought that he wanted to create something similar himself, but it wasn't until the end of 2021 he actually got around to doing so. When D3R first started making music, he was just having fun experimenting and wasn't posting too much of it or really taking it seriously. He said he liked the aspect of using Nightcore as a way to kind of hide his own voice at the time. D3R first started recording on the music software BandLab, but quickly moved to Ableton. Eventually, he switched to FL Studio and still uses that to this day. D3R took a step back from music in June 2022 because he wasn't taking it too seriously, didn't see much progress, and didn't have any friends in the music scene. It wasn't until October of 2022 he was inspired to get back into music after finding the artist known as Kitseki. D3R reached out as a fan to collaborate with Kitseki and the two artists quickly became friends. The first release on D3R's SoundCloud is the song titled High as Frick with a feature from Kitseki and production from Wujek. To this day, this is still his second most streamed song on Spotify. D3R then went on to collaborate with Kitseki on the song titled Life Force for his second release. D3R said he made the song before meeting Kitseki, but once he sent it over to Kitseki, the producer known as Praz completely remade the beat from what it originally was. D3R went on to find success on the song Zombies with a feature from Barely Human and production from Praz. Another notable song is the song titled Pills Got Us Falling In Love with Kitseki, Wasty, and Praz. D3R's most recent song getting a lot of attention is the song Toxic, again produced by Praz with a Barely Human feature. This song quickly jumped to his most streamed song and obtained over a million streams in little over a month of its release. This song found a lot of attention through TikTok. D3R feels having friends that make music is one of the most important things and gives a lot of credit to Kitseki for helping him find his group of friends slash collaborators. D3R was part of the collective titled Euroboys ran by Kitseki with the artists Praus, Zyja, Wujek, Artisan, and M1V. This collective is currently inactive. Currently, D3R is part of the collective titled Fab Fantasy. D3R was friends with some of the members before doing a Discord show put together by the collective. After the show, D3R got a message from Barely Human asking him to join the collective in March of 2023. D3R mostly just enjoys collaborating with the members of the Fab Fantasy collective, but one notable collaborator outside of the collective he enjoys working with is a producer known as Blood Pup. When I interviewed D3R for the video, I asked him what his friends in real life thought about his music. He said they were supportive in a weird way, but they didn't understand it or think any success would come from it. He said after finding success with music, his friends were pretty shocked. D3R also mentioned an online friend he met on Xbox being shocked by his success. D3R said he told this friend he wanted to make music similar to Hyperpop before he started and the friend said he didn't have the right voice for it. Going forward, D3R is working on making the themes and his lyrics more meaningful to him, saying that making music about partying was beginning to get boring. The first example of this was in the song Toxic, which responded well with the fans. He's working on putting together a full project with these more mature lyrics. He actually had a full project with Praz almost finished but scrapped it to pursue the change in his music. D3R also hopes to travel sometime in the near future to meet up with music friends. D3R is a great young artist and I look forward to seeing where he goes. Well that's all for this video, big shout out to Hopeless for the edit and please subscribe for more mini documentaries on various underground artists.